Amen. We're certainly happy for every one of you that are here tonight. The Lord bless you real, real good. Somebody turn to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 7 and just read right out loud. Whoever finds it, just read out loud. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 7. That's my verse for today. And uh, you'd lose if we was having a sword drill. Ephesians 1, 7. Read out loud. Whoever finds it. Wait, we have redemption, wait, 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 we have redemption through what? Through what? Hey man, go on. According to the riches of his grace. Hallelujah. Well, that's, uh, that's helped me today. That's my verse for today. And uh, I memorized that and tried to memorize a verse a day and and uh, on my Bible program on my phone, but uh, that, that's, that's been with me all day long. And uh, there's something about uh, that. And just, just memorize it. Commit it to memory and, and just ask the Lord to seal that to your heart and to your life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are happy for every one of you that are here. The Lord bless you good for being in God's house on this Wednesday night. Amen. Praise the Lord. Prayer meeting crowd, we welcome you. Good to have uh, girls you're just known around here, Stevie's girls, but we're glad you're here. Uh, Amy and Danielle, we welcome them and uh, service tonight and uh, from UBC and uh, good to have Ben Fraunfeller. Welcome him. And uh, good to have brother Chad Winters. We welcome him. And each one of you, Karen and Gary, my wife, sister, and husband, welcome them. There have been old timers around here. And, but uh, we welcome every one of you, and we trust the Lord to warm our hearts together. And uh, let's stand and ask God's blessing upon uh, this service tonight. We need a fresh touch from heaven. I do. And let's just ask the Lord to, to give that divine supply that's needed. Brother. And Lord, would you ask God's blessing, please, on this service this evening? Surely we do. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Do it, Lord, we pray. Sure. Yes. Yes, we do, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's get our hymnal now as Brother Thomas comes to lead us in our singing. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to number 232. 232. Sun shining out there. Beautiful afternoon. Amen. Let's rejoice as we sing together tonight. He abides. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way. For the hand of God in all my life I see. And the reason of my bliss, yes, is secret all is this, that the comforter abides with me. He abides, he abides. Hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing on this as I look the Lord away. Once my heart was full of sin, once 
a deep settled peace in my soul. There's a deep settled peace in my soul. deep settled peace tonight it only come from God above bless his Amen. name number 248 please 248 we'll sing a couple three verses all things are ready to come to the feast that whosoever will surely meaneth me and surely meaneth you amen thank you brother thomas for those choice of songs tonight amen praise the lord praise god amen 
This is Wednesday night prayer and praise service. Normally we have around here. Does anybody need to have a note of praise? Need to give honor and glory to God? Amen. Thank God. Well, praise the Lord. You obey the Lord. We're not trying to pump one out of you, but if you have one burning, we want to hear it. And we thank God for his faithfulness to our hearts and lives and the victory. Brother. Yes. Sure. Yes. Hey, man. Thank God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Brother Chad, if you'd head this way, I'm going to have you lead us in prayer. Let's, we do want to go to the Lord in prayer. Let's do remember our workers that God would help them, strengthen them, and encourage their heart, and they would sense that help uh, from the Lord uh, tonight as well as throughout this week. A uh, number of needs are still in our bulletin. Let's do remember all of these. Our Church of the Week is Mountain View Bible Church. In uh, Yuma, Arizona, continue remembering Brother Nicely and the people there, spiritually, physically, financially, and emotionally. Uh, the Lynn family, the John Lynn family, our family of the week. And so let's do remember them spiritually, physically, financially, and emotionally. God would give help and victory in their hearts, and they would sense the touch of God in their soul. Amen. Most of you know Brother Perry uh, went to the hospital today. Had, uh, had been having some hurt, hurting in the bottom of his, uh, just below his Adam's apple. That's where, when he had the heart attack before, that's where he had the pain. And uh, it, this morning he woke up as well as heaviness of his chest. So he called his doctor. His doctor said, come to the hospital. So he went, ran an EKG, and it was gonna do a stress test, but after the doctor read the EKG and compared it with his uh, old one, said there's some irreg irregularities here. I want to send you to Indianapolis uh, to get a cat a catheterization, heart cat. And uh, so they are doing that sometime between 7.30 and 4 o'clock tomorrow. I'm working him in the schedule, but uh, do pray that God would give that help and touch. When I left this afternoon, he said, if I felt now like I did this morning, I'd have never called my doctor. He said, I'm feeling good right now. So thank the Lord. Uh, and now uh, uh, that the Lord could be hearing and answering prayer already, and we, that's what we want to believe. The Lord is touching him, and so let's do continue to pray for him as well, that God would give that touch in, in Brother Perry's life as well. Amen. number of needs here, number of physical needs uh, of those that have recently had surgery. Continue remembering Misty in prayer that God would give help and victory in her life as well. Amen. You have request. Amen. Unspoken by uplifted hand. The Lord knows every need. Thank God he does. And every burden, every concern. And uh, let's do lift in prayer tonight. Uh, good to have Brother Chad Winters, one of our young preachers. Let, come, brother, and uh, lead us in prayer. Many as can bow to our knees. Let's lift together as he leads us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. We thank you for another opportunity to be in your house. We thank you for your presence that's here, that's amongst your people tonight. And Lord, we thank you that we were able to come to the feast. We thank you for that invitation that Jesus gave to us. And Lord, we're so thankful that you uh, saved us when we repented of our sins. And we remember that evening that when we were born again. And Lord, we recognize tonight that the blood of Jesus Christ transforms lives. And, and Father, we're thankful that it transformed our life tonight. And Lord, I just ask you to help us to make over the blood of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity tonight to worship you in spirit and truth. 
And Lord, tonight we recognize here at Plainfield that they are in revival this week. And we pray, Lord, you bless Brother and Sister Thomas and brother, bless Brother and Sister Myers as they are uh, preaching and singing. I ask tonight, Lord, you just lay your hand upon them once again tonight. We ask you bless them and anoint them, we pray. But Lord, give us hearts that are open and ears that are open and, and help us to obey the truth. Uh, amen, Lord. Help us to walk in the light of your word we pray and may we not be hearers only but may we be doers as well we ask tonight and then Lord we recognize that there are prayer requests we recognize that the John Lynn family Lord we pray that you bless and help them tonight you know their needs Lord and I ask you to remember that family of the week and then father we think about out in human Arizona we pray Lord you bless the pastor out there and bless his congregation you know what their needs might be tonight and Lord I just pray you reach down and touch them and encourage them out there. Then, Father, we thought about Brother and Sister Dodger in the church here at Plainfield. We ask, Lord, you'd continue to give them souls, and we thank you for their ministry and their work here. And we pray, Lord, they continue to be a lighthouse in this community, Lord. And we ask for your divine presence right here tonight, Father. And, Lord, we recognize that there are unspoken requests, and we ask you to reach in every one of them tonight. You know there may be souls that, that different ones are praying for. And Lord, help them to hang on. Help them to believe you to save tonight because we recognize that God's still in the business of saving people and he's still in the business of sanctifying. So Lord, help us to hang on and to hold on to your promises tonight and to continue to pray for them. And then Father, our minds went to Brother Perry. We ask Lord you reach down and touch Brother Perry tonight. You know what he's facing, what he's up against. And Lord, I just pray you just be right there with him and his wife and their family. And Father, we ask you continue to help him and touch him tonight. We thank you for what he's done for us and all the work that he's done for the ICHA. And Lord, we just pray you would continue to bless him and touch him tonight. And then Lord, we ask once again for your divine presence to continue to work right here. And Father, we recognize it's not by my, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. In Jesus' name. Then we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for good season of prayer. And let's do, remember, every need and burden and concern throughout the week as you pray. Remember, we are on the winning side. Amen. With banners unfurled, we'll tell the whole world that Jesus is captain and guide. Amen. There's not to fear when he is near, though fierce sometimes the conflict may be. We'll never give in. No. The fight against sin with Christ, there's victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you, Brother and Sister Thomas, for your singing and for your good spirit. And, and uh, you just, some of God's people, you just, you just naturally love them. To know God's people, you do. But these are kind of special kind. And we, we do love and appreciate them. Amen. And uh, I was thinking the way they smile. Both of them smile. But he's got a bigger smile than her, I think, because he's got a bigger mouth. But uh, if you haven't noticed that, just notice it. It's there. But my folks were down somewhere in revival some years ago down in uh, Florida singing in, in Cocoa Beach, singing, and Mike Weaver was a pastor there, and he had a couple of fellas that were brothers, and they weren't all there. And they come up to my folks, and they said, uh, you know what? You folks can't sing, but you sure can smile. <laughs> and uh, well, they got out in the car, and one of them, I don't know whether mom said to dad or dad said to mom, Said, man, I'm telling you what, those fellas are, are retarded. You can't really, you, you know, they don't, they're not all there. Their elevator didn't go all the way up there. And uh, the other one said, but yeah, but they always tell the truth. <laughs> so, but the Thomases can smile and sing. The Lord bless them good as they smile and sing. Amen. <laughs> I 
don't know how to answer it to reply to that. <laughs> Hope he's telling the truth, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the songwriter said, I'm glad I started. I'm glad for the time I did make that start for heaven. I intend by God's grace to keep going until I make it through. Bless his name. When I confessed my sins to Jesus and he sweetly took me in, I just started. But I kept going. Then he sanctified and he filled me with the spirit deep within. I'm glad I started, and I'll keep going. I'll keep going till I enter in and sit down by the river neath the tree of life with loved ones who have bravely kept the faith. Hand in hand, we'll stroll together with our Lord on streets of glory. I'm glad I started, and I'll keep going. Though the trials of life may test me, I'll trust in amazing grace. I'm glad I started, and I'll keep going. For the battle's almost over, and soon we'll leave this place. I'm glad I started, and I'll keep going. I'll keep going till I enter in and sit down by the river neath the tree of life with loved ones who have bravely kept the faith. Hand in hand we'll stroll together with our Lord on streets of glory. I'm glad I started, and I'll keep going. When he comes to claim his children, I'll be among his chosen few. So glad I started, and I kept going. We'll rise through the clouds to glory with those who have stayed true. So glad I started, and I kept going. I'll keep going till I enter in and sit down by the river near the tree of life with loved ones who have bravely kept the faith. Hand in hand we'll stroll together with our Lord on streets of glory. I'm glad I started and I'll keep going. So glad I started and I'll keep going. Heaven, I'll be home above. Heaven, land of peace and love. Oh, it makes me feel like traveling on heaven's supernal. That is real. Heaven, I'd be home above heaven, land 
the peace and love. Oh, it makes me feel like traveling on heaven supernal, heaven eternal. Oh, I'm so glad that it's Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad? <laughs> Amen. Bless his name. Bless his name. Thank God. Amen. Good to have Andrea and Jonathan in the service as well. We welcome them. And I know the Grays or the Myers are happy that they're here. Amen. Good to see the Morelands come in as well. I should have mentioned that earlier, but we're glad they're here. Amen. Want to come to you for revival offering tonight, and I don't know where we're at uh, on the finances of coming in. I haven't talked to Sister of the Revival, I haven't talked to Sister Armour about it, but if you'll dig deep, we always need good, good offerings. If uh, I've often thought if, if every family would at least give $100 for revival expenses, it'll sure help lift the load. Amen. And God will bless you as you give. Come, ushers, if you would. I want to come to you again for the offering tonight and ask the Lord to help us and to bless us, his will to be done. Amen. Brother DeLong has been with Brother uh, Juan Gonzalez today and had it in a court situation. could have been pretty serious. And uh, Brother DeLong, just give a note of praise. Just don't say what you're not supposed to, but just give a note of praise about it. <laughs> Amen. I thank the Lord for his help this morning. I guess he hadn't been sentenced to a year in jail, but he just suspended the sentence and gave him a year of probation and 40 hours of community service. And uh, we thank the Lord for working things out there. You tell him where he could do community service, didn't you? All right, good. <laughs> Amen. I like it. <laughs> Brother Servants asked God to bless this test in Washington Army.
aren't you glad for that touch? Amen. And the victory and the help and life that has been transformed. Amen. By the power of God. Bless the Lord. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. I didn't aim to overlook Stephen Yvonne. I was going to say they kind of belong here. But anyway, we're glad. Welcome them back home as well tonight. Amen. Each one of you, the Lord bless you. Thank you again, brother and sister Thomas, for your faithfulness and your singing. And let's just get open up our hearts as they would sing for us again tonight. After which, Brother Myers, thank you, Brother Myers, for the faithfulness and truth uh, today at school. Did a wonderful, wonderful job, and uh, children as well. And I was just, I was right on the edge of my seat and uh, uh, thinking about that big cat. But anyway, uh, they uh, certainly appreciate so much the preaching from night to night and the singing. Let's open up our heart. Be receptive unto God's word in song and in word. The Lord bless him good. There are things as we travel this shifting sands that transcend all the reason of man. But the things that matter the most in this world, they can never be held in our hand. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary, and I'll believe whatever the cost. And when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to the old rugged cross. I believe that the Christ who was slain on that cross has the power to change lives today. For he changed me completely, a new life is mine, that is why by the cross I will stay. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. And I'll believe whatever the cost. And when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to the old rugged I believe that the Christ who was slain on that cross has the power to change lives today. For he changed me completely a new life is mine that is why by the cross I will stay oh I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary 
and I'll believe whatever the cause. And when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to the old rugged cross. And when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to the old Thank you again, brother and sister Thomas, for that beautiful, beautiful singing. Thank the Lord. It's good to see each one of you here again tonight, and I trust that you have come with your hearts open to the Lord. Uh, I thought I might, just before I deliver the message, I might, might challenge you um, to remember Brother Perry in prayer. Uh, yeah. if I can say this in the right way <clears throat> sometimes uh, we get different concepts of leadership and uh, I'm just saying because I've been there uh, now that I'm not there maybe I can help some folks to understand there is a tremendous responsibility and a lot of pressure in those positions so pray much for him <clears throat> i uh, i learned one day as a real concept you know they say whoever it was they always tell the truth and uh, <clears throat> i didn't know this i didn't know this but we were uh i didn't know what happened we were at our camp and uh, work week and uh, cutting down some trees and whatever. And one day they were going to cut down this tree and they threw a rope way up. And anyway, I ended up withholding the rope and I stood back like this, pulling that rope while to make sure it came in our direction. And I didn't know it, but somebody snapped my picture. And sometime later, <clears throat> They didn't approach me, but they did this. They published the Pilgrim News, and when it came out, on the front page was the conference president, like this. Well, I passed it out in service one night. I wasn't there, and this lady had her grandson sitting side of her, and uh, she said, oh, there's Brother Myers. The little guy looked over, and he said, that ain't Brother Myers. Well, she said it is too. And he looked again. He said, that ain't Brother Myers. <laughs> and she looked at him. She said, son, that is Brother Myers. He said, that ain't Brother Myers. He don't work. So I was just posing, but and I, I'm glad you smiled at that. But I want to tell you, some of those guys, when you're sleeping, they're carrying some of your burdens. I've been there, I've done that. 
And I'm not looking for sympathy. I've survived it. I, uh, I resigned from, uh, from that after many years. But I, thought, I just felt impressed to tell you that. Sometimes in leadership, they won't ever tell you that because we don't go around whining. And I'm not whining now. I just wanted you to know that I'm a rope holder. Yes. Oh, you missed yes. that too. Let's... Turn with me tonight, if you will, <clears throat> to the book of Genesis. I want to skip around here momentarily to read you little portions of something that you already know. But I want you to see different segments of the story. Genesis chapter 6. Look at verse 1. It came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also his flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. And then uh, notice in verse 8. Now I am skipping here, so just to put this together. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 13 and God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And, behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. This is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. Turn over to chapter 7, if you will. I'm just reading you these little things because you already know the story. I'll be coming back in a general sense to these. <clears throat> Chapter 7, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all the house into the ark for thee. Have I seen righteousness before me in this generation? And every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and its female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth, forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded of him. Chapter 8 and verse 1, And God remembered Noah and every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained and the waters returned from off the earth continually and after the end of the hundred and fifty days the waters were abated the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence tonight again. Now, Lord, we need your help in a very desperate way. We pray you'll touch our hearts together, quicken our minds, and Lord, help each one that we may listen as you would have us to, that through it all we will honor you, and we shall give you praise in thy name. Amen. <clears throat> I read those several different areas because I want to talk to you about, about that story. The title of my message tonight, and I want, you to, I want you to get the title, because I, I mean this as seriously as I know how, it's going to rain. 
Don't shorten the ark. Let that just settle in for a moment. Don't, don't shorten the ark because it's going to rain. There are three things I want to talk to you about in regards to this tonight. First of all, I want to share with you the thought of the engulfing storm on the horizon. Secondly, I want to talk to you about the encouragement to hold steady. And then last, the excitement of hope. Let's look at the engulfing storm on the horizon. Now, sometimes these things are a little difficult for me because I know, I know you are hearing a multiplicity of bad things out there. And I am very much aware that you have not come to revival to hear about all the foreboding storm out there. But I do want to remind you it's going to rain. I feel like I have to be faithful if I am going to speak. So, it's going to rain. Let's look at that. God told Noah, while we don't want to hear a lot of things about what's going on, however, God told Noah of the coming storm. What, wasn't that nice? Yes. Wasn't that pretty faithful that God told Noah, there's a storm coming, sir. A storm is coming, my friends, that will make Noah's deluge resemble an April shower. God has told us that as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. There is some repetition in many ways that's going to come again. It seems, and I don't know how you feel about it, but it seems tonight that the air is actually electrified with apprehension, not just a few people here and there. Are, are you listening to people? I'm not talking just about the church. It was an auction that I went to back home, and I had met a young man. He was a tall guy in business and uh, a different type of guy. But I walked into the auction, and Chris saw me, and he walked over to me, and he, he knew I was a minister, but he looked at me, and right off the reel, he said, you know, things don't look good. I mean, here's a guy in the world. He said, things don't look good, he, and these are his words. He said, we are global. I'm staying near home. Now, it doesn't mean anything to you, I understand. But here's a man in the world, probably in his late 30s. Things don't look good. We're global. I'm staying near home. Our family used to go to uh, the, can't remember the place now, but it was a, an eating place. And we went there quite often, and there was a, maybe a lady in her 40s, a very pleasant girl that came from Poland and came here and learned, and she was really working, and she was such a pleasant person. She liked our family. Our family liked her. She stood side of our table one night, and she just looked at us, and she said, I don't like what's happening I'm scared. Total woman in the world. I don't like what's happening. I am scared. You know, without my telling you, the headlines, newscasters, talk show hosts, the focal point is trouble, and often the focal point is where? The Middle East, where it's all going to culminate. A few years ago when Paul Harvey was around, one of the last things Paul Harvey said before he left the scene of action, he said, it looks like the good book's fulfillment is coming true. 
wars and famine and violence and truce breakers and plagues and Israel surrounded by armies and earthquakes and simultaneously all of that is happening right this very moment. All together it's happening. So Brother Myers, I don't want you to scare me. My friend, whoa, wait a minute. Listen to the last point of that. I want to get down to the excitement of hope. <laughs> but we, you know, my friends, let's not put our head in the sand. Let's be realistic about what is happening. Yes. Noah did not see the deluge coming, but he believed in it. He was sure it would come because God said it would. And his belief in God's word made him despise all the opposition he had to encounter. It made him to begin the work. It helped him to continue the work. And guess what? It helped him to finish the work. God said, no, a storm is coming. And he reached out in faith and said, if God said it, I believe it. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Like the little bumper sticker? Little, you know, we used to sing, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it for me. I, I, don't you like that chorus? I do too, but I saw a bumper sticker one day I liked even better. It said, God said it, and that settles it. You, I don't believe it. You know, it doesn't make it whether, whether you believe it or don't believe it. God said it, and that settles it. It helps if you believe it. But Noah said, God said it. And I believe it. Yes. While he was doing it, it made him bold to tell the people the truth, although there was, get this, preachers and everybody, although at that time there was no proof or evidence to back his words. Right. He said, it's going to rain. What? He couldn't turn the chapter and book and chapter and page. How do you know? God said it. That's all. His job was absolutely horrendous. The proportions of the ark were staggering for his day. The implements for construction were primitive. Humanly, the odds were overwhelming. I'm hurrying through this, and by the way, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to try to read most of my notes here so I can get done on time tonight. The opposition was going to be stressful. However, the scripture says, Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Chapter 7, 9. There went in two and two unto Noah and the ark, the male and the female, as God commanded Moses. Chapter 7 and 16. And they went in, went in male and female. Of all flesh as God commanded him, and God shut him in. Let me tell you, my friend, at that moment, the hour was dark. It was degrading. It was depressing because God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. We think we're living in a troublesome time. My friend, it's back then, continually. God had his fill where everything everybody did, his mind was full of evil and wickedness. And my friend, has that come around? again you can hardly go anywhere without your mind being saturated by some kind of wickedness out there yes. I trust God will help us to see this the earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence and I told you all of that but let me tell you let me say but all of that was dark and dismal and depressing and da downright almost hopeless to the people there. But God had a plan. <laughs> Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that in all of the mess we're in, God has a plan? And by the way, His plan, the proportions, and the provisions would be adequate for the storm, and nothing has changed today. Secondly, I want you to talk, I want to talk to you about the encouragement to hold steady. 
A lot of people are sure, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to hold steady. None of this has taken God by surprise. And friends, if I could only get this across to you, God is not on his throne wringing his hands like this. No, 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 no. We are wringing our hands. We're frustrated. But God is in control. Amen, he is. He is in control. And so Noah started to build. Remember the encouragement to hold on. Noah started to build. He moved to the great work of his life. And friend, let me challenge you tonight when I say, don't shorten the ark. It's going to rain. People are depending on us to be dependable. And let's not shorten anything at this late hour. There is a great calling. No, no calling any greater than to prepare an ark for our families. Did you get that? There is no greater calling nor goal than to prepare an ark for our families. And I don't have time tonight to get into a lot of detail. But my friend, I actually wonder anymore. There is a storm coming. Remember, friends, it's going to rain. Don't shorten the ark. And I wonder what has happened just simply to a leadership I mean, fathers, mother, whoever, whatever happened to the simple word, no. Do I have to explain that? I hope not. No, I'm serious. No, honey. Honey what? Well, Brother Myers, don't say honey what. It's my sweetheart. Well, then tell her no. Tell the guy no. Well, let me think. What are you thinking about if it's against God's word? Say no. I don't mean to get excited about a little word no, but we've lost the ability to say no. And let me tell you something. I don't know how long some of us are going to be hanging around because you start dealing with telling your, somebody's kid no, you don't get too many calls. Well, I thank God I never, ever one time preached for recalls. And I'm not being a smart aleck. I'm really not. We need, my friend, we're shortening the ark. The government says, you can't discipline your child. Don't tell me I couldn't discipline one of mine. My father whopped me where I felt it. Yeah. Say, oh, don't say that publicly. I'll put you in jail. I had a friend of mine who was a very prominent teacher. And he had a son, and he went to the public school, and he came home. His son came home one day. You're going to hate me for this, but it's okay. I'm repeating somebody else, not my words. <laughs> His son came home and started this little, he picked up uh, something from school where to challenge your parents. And I, he said something, you'd have to know his father. He said something to his father like this. Well, you know, I can always tell them at school what you did. He said, go ahead. He looked right at his son, and he said, if they put me in jail, he said, when I get out of jail, you will be the first one I will look at. Yeah. You yeah. say, oh, you shouldn't talk that way from the pulpit. You know why we are where we are? Because people have failed to give us a few directions along the way. Right. I didn't mean to spend so long on no. I was talking about Noah. Hey, maybe I could put that in there. No. Ah. You know, friends, I don't mind your smiling, but we're in serious trouble. You can't discipline your child so they go to school. We sat just the other day with a teacher who was telling us about their classroom that literally little kids... If they get mad and angry, they can just walk out of the class. I've got news for you. Walk out once, honey. Yeah. That's the generation I came from. Mm -hmm. 
I could tell you some things that you, you, would, you just would not like me. I, if, if it was our day, I'd be in jail. Believe it or not, I drove school bus years ago when the driver was the driver. He was boss. Oh, I'm, I'm digressing. I'm going anyway. Uh, you know, if you have some, the roaster on that's ready at 20 of 9, you're just missing. But seriously, I grew up when parents had a farm. I was driving a school bus one day. They told me, this, they said, this bus line is the worst we've got. I was the local pastor. I carried some of these kids in my car to Sunday school. But when I took the job, I just stopped the bus. I said, my kids understand one thing. There will be no swearing on this bus. There'll be no bad language. When this bus is moving, nobody moves from one seat to another. I was two miles from the local school. You're going to think I'm crazy, and I probably was. I was two miles from school. Somebody threw a little wall, hit a kid side of the head, and somebody jumped up, and this 13-year-old girl, she said, I wonder who's running, running, somebody. I said, Joanne, I'm running the bus. Yeah, well, I wonder who is running. I said, Joanne. I stopped the bus, opened the door, and I said, Joanne, get off. Two miles from school. Oh, yeah, I know. Let, let me finish. A bigger kid uh, up where I live, he said, hey, I wonder. I said, and you get off too. So I left two kids standing there. Now, there, there was a house there where I was picking up some kids. So I drove back to school. I drove in the yard. Coming out of the front door was the principal. He came right to the bus. And he said, Mr. Myers, I said, Mr. Sterling. No, 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 I said, Mr. Sterling. No 13-year-old is going to. Oh, that's okay, that's okay. He says, the next time, put him off at home. So I came down the hill the next morning. I went right by Joanne's house. No, I didn't pick her up. So I went down the river and I came back. And when I came back, she was standing by the road. I opened the door. She said, Mr. Brownell said I could get on the bus. I said, Joanna, Mr. Brownell did not tell me you could get back on the bus. And I closed the door and went back to school. <laughs> you say, you must have been one lousy rat. No, we lived in a different generation. Yes, sir. So I got back to school, and I thought, well, maybe I better check with Mr. Brownell. He's the guy that hired me. So I went down to his house, and he wasn't up yet, and I stood in his yard by my car, and I saw another car coming. Boy, he came in the yard. It was Joanne's stepfather. He came out. He came right over to me, and he said, I would hit you if I dared. Well, I was younger then, and I didn't plan on his hitting me. I wasn't going to hit him, but I was fast as lightning, and I wasn't going to stand there and let him hit me. I said, now, Mr. Brunell, if you'll settle down, or Mr. Conklin, if you'll settle down, we'll talk. It's time somebody talked about it, he said. I said, okay. So Mr. Brunell got up. I went in, and I listened to them talk back and forth. When they settled it, as long as I was still in charge and I was the bus driver, she could get on my bus. Because I told the principal, I said, Mr. Sterling, I don't need the job that bad. I was pastoring a church, didn't, didn't give any salary at all. I didn't need the job. <laughs> I hope I told him the truth. <laughs> Whatever came in the morning was all you had. If it was $9, it was all yours. If it was 30 it was yours. That's the way we lived. And by the way, the bus driving job paid me, I think it was $27 a week. That was big bucks. But I said, I, I don't need the job that bad. So Joanne did get back on. Say, oh, Brother Myers, that type of thing, I'm going to tell you, you do that, you're going to run into trouble. Let me tell you something, my friend. Let me tell you something. 
I came down the hill later than that. A mother walked out with about six kids in front of her. And I was just a young guy, and they called me by my first name. I don't advocate that, but they did. And she let her out. She looked up at me, and she said, Donnie, don't ever put one of mine off. And what she, I knew her, what she was telling me, you handle them on the bus. I want to tell you, that isn't even in this, that isn't even in my notes. Why am I here? There's a storm coming. For me, maybe. So I'm coming home from school. Her son is on my bus and another boy, and they got fighting and spitting at each other on the bus. Said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I pulled the old Brockway over, pulled the brakes on. I went back. I took her son. I bent him right over the back of one of the seats, and I wailed his little bottom until dust blew out it, and my hand stung. I took the other kid. I bent him right over a seat, and I wailed his bottom. And I mean, my hand stung. You say, oh, drive them all away from your church. No way. Let me tell you, to this day, not one of those kids ever dared to go home and tell it. If they did, they'd have gotten worse at home. I could end up in jail for all this, but if I don't see you guys again, thanks for letting me be here. You say, Brother Mayer, you don't understand. I'm talking about a generation that needs somebody not to shorten the arc, but my hold it steady, my friend. Oh, you're driving away. No, I moved out of that community. The little kid that I whaled on his little bottom, I, t I went away for several years, moved back uh, 40 miles from there. And one day he called me up and he said, Brother Myers, he said, I'd like to ask you a question. The kid I wailed, he said, if we came down, would you marry my girlfriend and me? Drive him away. To this day, those kids are like this. I mean that family. Forgive me, but they love me. And kids will love you if you'll say, no, it's for your own good, son. It's your own good, daughter. Somebody pray to help me get out of here. It's going to rain. Yes, sir. Building an ark for our families. He was activated by faith. Simply God said it. That settled it. He was in the minority. An, over, an overwhelming Hopeless minority. We think today, well, it doesn't look like there's too many of us. Don't ever kid yourself. There are people being born by the, or saved by the hundreds in other parts of the world. We're not alone. And don't ever think you are alone, my friend. He was engaged in the most unpopular cause. It doesn't appear that he was openly persecuted, but doubtless all the artillery of sarcasm and ridicule was trained upon him. He was obedient. He was strict. It cost self-abandonment to the divine teaching. It involved self-sacrifice. It involved much ridicule. What a challenge. You think we have a challenge today? How would you like to be out on some hillside building a big boat out of proportion by yourself? At the beginning, as the noise of the axes and hammers rang out, the first feeling excited probably would be one of derision and mirth. Probably people said, what in the world are they doing up on the mountain? That bang, bang, bang. What are they doing? Then disappointment. Then it probably their feeling turned to disgust. And lastly, probably a silent contempt. Talking about water. Thank the Lord for that rain. My friends, the similarities today are startling. They're really startling. Our day is filled with violence, oppression, tyranny, persecution of good men, injustice, cruelty, more and more, if you're listening, the church, the Christian right, is taunted, it's scoffed, and ridiculed on your newspapers and on the news day after day. They're mocking you. Do you know you're the religious right? Do you know you're the dummies in society? I tell you, that's happening all over the country. And it's growing. 
but don't shorten the ark. We need to be encouraged to hold steady. We think our job is large. The brother Myers, I don't know if we're going to make it or not. How do you think Noah felt ever so often? 450 feet long this ark was. 75 feet wide. 45 feet high. And he probably had the same challenge to get people to help. You, you know, pastors and everybody, you, you have a work being, they flood right in here, don't they? Oh, wait a minute, take a number. If you're going to help, stand in line. Boy, I'm losing more of you by the minute. <laughs> I want you to quickly, and I'm hurrying as fast as I can, I want you to get the picture. He's going to build this ark. Let's start. Just imagine hundreds of wooden pegs. I'm not talking about eight penny nails or spy. Wooden pegs. Think with me now, buckets and buckets of pitch. A preacher of righteousness surrounded with all of this wood and wooden pegs and buckets of pitch. A preacher of righteous, righteousness. Yeah. And then somebody comes up and starts off right away. Noah, why so big? Oh, God said so. <laughs> Thanks, Noah. Yes, Who are you to get such a message? Give some proof, Noah. God said it. Hold on. Today, some get disgusted with a preacher if he says anything. Don't blame him. Blame the book. If the book says it, don't challenge God. Now listen to the conversation out there. The old man will never live to complete his task. He's, he's going to build a boat 450 feet long. Look how old he is now. He's over there nursing his arthritis, and he thinks he's going to build a boat. <laughs> uh, and if he does, how are the animals and so on going to be collected. Give me a break. Even, even if they are, is it likely that so cumbrous a vessel will float? Where will all the water come from? He's on a hill. And so it becomes Noah's folly. And while others are growing rich or spending their time in pleasure and sin, he spent his substance upon or about the ark. His call was to preach righteousness and save his family. Imagine the pressure. His neighbors would ridicule him. And he would be the song of the drunkards. The building would be called Noah's folly. But remember, every blow of his hammer and axes was a call to repentance, a call to prepare arcs to. And every time we hear a message or a song, it is just a warning that we better be preparing because it's going to rain. We don't want to leave others out. Think of his wife. Think of his wife. Man, she had to have faith in this fella. Noah, when they're all alone by themselves. Noah, it's not the right question, but do you, do you really think it? 450 feet? The ladies' society, was, they were laughing today how much water that would take. Noah, do you think of his wife? Say, oh, she should have. No, wait a minute. I won't even ask if you women have ever questioned some of your husband's folly. I mean, suggestions. <laughs> think of his children. Now, I know they were not little kids, but think of them. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> Your dad's the guy that's building a boat, right? Right. Or, <laughs> yeah, he started one. 
Who's going to float your boat? Who's going to start your ark? You know, Dad, it's getting hard. You think your children are having a little difficulty today because somebody doesn't like the way they comb their hair or because they wear a dress. Brother Myers, our children are facing terrible things today. Oh, my. You know, Dad, every day something has, somebody has something to say. They call us the folly kids. Other ones call us the pitch kids. And others are starting to call us the archites. I know, son, I understand. But God said to do it this way. Even some of the people who come and work don't believe. They laugh at times and think we're old-fashioned and crazy and strange. But isn't there a way that we can shorten this thing? <clears throat> Do you really think every detail is necessary? Son, it doesn't matter what I think exactly. It's what God said. Yes. And that's where we are tonight. Now, I don't mean to be laborious, but that's where we are tonight, my friend. We need to stay with the book. We can't shorten it or we're going to go under. It's going to rain. There is a storm coming. And we need to hold on to what God says. I wish I could paint the picture closer. Pegs. Hundreds of pegs. They're possibly used for the construction. You've seen barns built where they may drill a hole and drive a peg in and hold all of this together. Hundreds of pegs. Maybe thousands. And can't you hear somebody say, if I see another bundle of pegs, if I hear him say peg one more time, I'm out of here. You want to put that into modern day vernacular? I want to tell you something. If a preacher says anything about modesty twice in a month, if he says modesty once more, I'm out of here. Well, you'll be out of the ark too. Yes, sir. Can't we lay the beams together and let the weight hold them? If I come one more time and I see one more bucket of pitch, I am quitting. I think those small pegs are ridiculous and that sticky pitch, ugh. On top of that, I can't stand pitchy pegs. <laughs> you think I'm exaggerating? No. They put this together with hundreds of yes. pegs, no doubt with pitch on them, to seal. Yes, sir. And I know I wrote in here in my own little handwriting, Straining at gnats or legalism. Yeah, the little pegs. Myers, get with something big. Do you know what held that ark together? Little pegs. Yes, sir. And today, when you think of wars going on and threat of nuclear warfare and all of that, and then try to come into a church and talk about modesty or what the people say, you got to be crazy with the magnitude of problems and you come back with these little minuscule things. Let me tell you something, friends. It's the pegs that hold it together. But incrementally, you can leave the pegs out if you want to. And when the storm comes, it's going to start leaking someplace. Leave them out if you want to. But when it rains, you're going under. The ark was to be covered with pitch without and within. Do you realize that they would have to cover 229,500 square feet with pitch? And if they did both sides of the floor inside, it would add 135,000 feet more. How would you like to be on the pitch crew? Read it in the book. The pitch was to keep the water and elements from the world out. Inside would help with the seepage. And it would help with the stench. Yes, 
Yes. And I want to tell you, if you build an ark where you live, my friend, you'll do your best to keep the world out and the Spirit of God in unity inside. It'll cost us something to save ourselves and our families. There is a constant barrage of compromise and whittling away to shorten the ark. Some things are like sticky pegs. Not many want to handle them. The barrage of compromise is pelting the church in the home. But let me tell you, talking or preaching about the coming storm and the necessity of pegs and pitch is being met with the same force Noah felt. Because of ridicule and a fear that someone will be offended or someone with the money or whoever, whatever might get hurt or voted out. or So it's starting to silence from the pulpit a lot of things that need to be said. Our young people are adrift tonight because they have grown up in a generation that doesn't know Joseph, and that's separation from the world and Sabbath desecration in sports. Kids know more about sports today than they do the Word. Heroes are from the big leagues. And I'm afraid to be specific. We're afraid to be specific for fear. Folks will think we are one of the archite crowd. You know who the archites are? I can tell you. They're just folks who believe God for what he says. True. True. Amen. Well, I'm not anywhere near done. I'm going to try to have to get this to shore if I can. Well, i got to use whatever words I can to... Majoring in minors? How often do you read the book? You know the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not. Oh, I hate, oh, well, wait a minute, I didn't write them. Who will dwell in thy tabernacle? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. He that putteth not all his money to use, or he that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not, no talebearers, no gossips. Where there is no wood, the fire goeth out. He that looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery already in his heart. I will place no wicked thing before mine eyes. These are all pegs. Uh, love one another. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. If your brother hath thought against you, go to him. There's jealousy and covetous modesty. A woman's long hair is her glory. Man's long hair is a shame. On and on and on and on. Yeah. Jesus said to the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. Yeah. But it's interesting tonight that the holiness movement, if you mention a few externals, True. you're not popular anymore. And guess what? Noah wasn't popular. But he saved his family. He saved his family. I don't have time. I wish I'd have saved a few minutes. But it's almost like, uh, was it Rip Van Winkle? It's almost like I woke up recently, and I must have, it looks like I must have missed a great revival. Because back in our area, must be TV had a revival because years ago when I was young, you could actually look at some television programs when I was young. I think a family could have looked at some of them. They were kind of clean and family-like, you know. But the church came on it and said, no, it's Hollywood. And back there. But now it's gone so far. Yes, sir. It's gone so far. Guess what? While the church is giving up on it, the world is condemning television. The law is trying to keep your kids away from television. They're saying it's ruining us. The world is telling us that. But now somehow it seems to have gone through a revival and it's okay. It's a pretty little thing anymore. And You see what happens? I, I've killed everything here. So I'm saying? You say anything anymore? Yeah.
I don't, I mean, I don't know how all you people feel about it, but I'm telling you back home, I'm listening to people, they, you know, they have bowling alleys and they're going dancing and uh, dancing lessons and professing Christians. We, oh, so much of that. They're going to the, lo back home, they're going to local theaters. Well, they're choosing good movies. How can you choose a good movie out of a dumpster? I mean, Hollywood. Oh, dear. The Lord help us. You guys got done ahead of me. I'm not done, but 60% of you are done. Just hold on a minute. I want, to, I want to talk to the other 40% just a little bit. <laughs> what, if, what if I started talking about the danger of computers and the internet and the VCRs and DVDs and scanner, yes. and toys for perversion, recipe, blah, 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 all of that? <clears throat> right while I speak to you tonight. A young man that I know, you would never dream. He was he's one of the nicest kids you want to meet. He's an adult. He's a father. Tonight, he is sitting four years in prison. You'd never dream it, but somehow, fooling around with his computer at home, all of a sudden, I don't have any idea. They have a mechanism in our area where they can drive with an automobile from the penal system or from the, the police department. They can drive by and pick up things that's going on in your house. And they stopped at his house, knocked on the door, and arrested him for child pornography. They picked it up. And he hardly knows how he got caught in such a stupid thing. You'd never dream it. I want to tell you something, you and I are sitting on destruction everywhere, and we better stay close and not plan on shortening the ark, my friends, because we need God's help. We need his help. There's little said anymore about where we go. The line of demarcation has been erased. We need to pitch it in and pitch without. Well, let me close. Let me close with this. The last point I wanted, I wanted to at least give this to you, and it's, it's almost time to quit now, but the excitement of hope. God means what he said. Noah was to provide shelter for them that they might not be drowned. He was to provide sustenance for them that they might not starve. Isn't that great? The time came. Now the ark is finished. The world look comes to look. Now the world, they see the finished product. And they stand and look and they wonder and they laugh. On a huge platform of timber, stand, of timber stands the ark. Noah examines his work, compares it with the plan. He had done his part and enters. God now collects the animals. The astonishment of the world at that strange sight. They're looking at this big boat and they hear this What's that thing doing? <laughs> Haven't seen a giraffe in a long time. Two of them. Yes, sir. Don't think they were getting nervous. It was serious business now. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something tonight, my friends, in this dark hour in which we live. 
the door is still open and it was open for seven days and they stood and watched and they could have gone in but they laughed their way back down in the valley they laughed their way back home they kept mocking and making fun all they wanted to yes sir and when the roman soldier reached up and pierced the side of jesus christ thought to let the blood out but when he let the blood out he opened the gates for the world to come in and here we are tonight, and he is waiting for the whole world to salvage the whole world. Yes. No, it's going to go on, but I can tell you, it's going to rain. And we're facing a challenge of shortening the ark tonight, of shortening the ark. I want to close with this. Several years ago, my wife and I were holding a meeting in Oklahoma. I had heard of, what was his name? The healer, Oral Roberts. I'd heard that name. In Oklahoma, they had a mammoth hospital there. It was one of the most elaborate where they had built this hospital. But Oral Roberts started building what they called a walkthrough Bible. Anybody ever heard of it? Ever seen any of it? We saw, they started building it. They didn't have much, they had several buildings. I mean everything, life size. While we were there, we went down and looked at it. And you, you could start into walking through the Bible. I mean, it was alive. My wife and I bought tickets and we entered in. Friends, It'll only take me just a couple minutes and I'll be finished. But we started in. We walked, once you walk in, you're starting walking through the Bible. And we walked up this ramp and stood there and it was like the beginning of time. I mean, it, you talk about money. It was beautiful. We stood there and honest, you could look into the heavens, the stars twinkling. and it, I, I can't describe it. It was beautiful. But you have so much time, and we walked out of there, and when we did, we walked out, and we walked right into another era of the Bible, and when we did, we walked around, and we walked right into what would have been <coughs> the Garden of Eden. I want to tell you something, it was so real. I mean, there was a brook, water was running. You could see Adam and Eve over here. Up there, you could see a serpent coming down. A tree. The greenery was absolutely beauty. I mean, the atmosphere was cool and crisp. I mean, it was beautiful. We stood there in amazement. Right in the Garden of Eden remained. We walked out of the Garden of Eden, and as we did, no kidding, here's what happened. We started walking out. We went around a little bend, and all of a sudden, we heard this thump, 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 thump. And we were on a ramp. And as we walked, of all things, there was the ark. I'm, the thing was a mammoth. We walked right up the ramp, right into the ark. On this end, just like this. On this end of the ark, just like here, it would have been some bleachers where people could sit down and see the ark. We sat down. And I want to tell you something. You talk about sound effects. We sat there, and all of a sudden, that big door came. Vroom, and we were in the ark. I have claustrophobia. <laughs> we're sitting in that ark. And they had it so that it would catch your eye. Up there, there was a window so big, sun was shining, it was bright. You could see out that. And all of a sudden, on purpose, a cloud went by. Another cloud, and then a darker cloud. And then it went, my, you could see the lightning out of that. It got black. And while we sat there, all of a sudden, (laughs) 
And we sat there in that ark, and it started pouring. It was, I mean, you could hear it. It poured, literally, it poured on that ark. And the first thing you know, they had that so geared, we sat there, and pretty soon, you felt it just like that ark was rising. That was okay. But now, outside of the ark, you could hear some shuffling. And man, that ark is going up, and it's raining and pouring. Noah! 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 <coughs> Noah! I mean, we could hear them out there. <coughs> Noah! Noah, let us in. Noah, open the door. No, 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 no. And it kept rising, and you could hear the people. Noah, Noah, no, 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 no. And pretty soon we're afloat. You say, that's all dramatics. Let me tell you, that happened one day. And I don't want to be ultra dramatic, but I can tell you it's going to rain. Yes, sir. Don't shorten the ark. We're going to need all of God that we can get. Amen. Because I really believe a storm is going to break somewhere. My friend, this in the United States of America cannot kill 50 million babies through abortion. We can't kill that many babies. We cannot legalize homosexuality. We cannot wipe God off of our buildings and take him out of our schools. We can't laugh God in the face after all we have had. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. And families, don't shorten the ark. Just simply say, honey, I love you, because I can tell you, it doesn't record it any place at all, but I can tell you, when that little family got in the ark, I am sure some of those boys said, Dad, I want to thank you for holding steady. I can even hear the daughter-in-laws saying, Dad, I have to tell you, there's sometimes I wondered, but I want to thank you for yeah. holding steady. Thank you, Mom. Yeah. Thanks, Mom, for biking, Dad. Thank you for holding steady. Amen. And when the storm comes, you'll be thankful to each other. And kids, you'll be thankful for a mom and dad that said, Honey, no, it'll hurt you. I don't want you to. It's a sin. I'm finished, friends, tonight, but seriously, it, it's getting pretty late. Clouds are coming. It's going to rain. Can I ask you, don't shorten the ark. Because the hope is <laughs> we're on our way out of here. Thank God. He's going to take, take us through the storm. Don't despair for a moment. He's going to take us through the storm. The thing of it is we want to take everybody with us we can. Amen. Amen. Some people don't like you. That's okay. Hold steady. Amen. Honest brother, I don't, I'm done. I don't even know how to close this. Does any, anybody want to pray? I don't mean sin. Do we need to pray about anything? It's, it's time to go. It's time to go. But if any family, anybody, if we, if we need each other to pray for one another. Yes. If we can spend a few minutes if you want to pray. Yes. Otherwise, let's hold the challenge, okay? Amen. Yes. I know it's revival and we haven't really opened this up for altar services, but I'm trying to mind the Lord. Amen. Sure. Let's stand together. <clears throat> Oh, God, help us. Our Heavenly Father. <laughs> 
Our Father, we thank you for those that have been faithful down through the years. Thank you for those that kept our feet to the fire and those that gave us fair warnings. Dear Lord, you look at this congregation tonight, these precious families that have gathered in with children and loved ones. We pray, Lord, tonight as we go our separate ways that you'll accept of our thanks for your help. We pray that you'll go with us to our homes, keep us safe, and Lord, help us to do our best to prepare arcs for our families, for we know that you have prepared an ark for each one of us. Go with us, help us to be all you want us to be. And we'll give you thanks. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.